Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello students, welcome to the TV learning programs. I'm Teacher Hubbard, and uh, I'm going to be taking you through the biology and heritage science of the year three. We are on unit eight. I think you remember uh, we discussed unit eight and we talked about uh, types of saturation, where I talked about single and uh, double saturation, closed and uh, open saturatory system. See, there are two types of saturatory system. We talked about single and open saturatory system. So we're going to start the lesson. Before we start our lesson of today, I would remind you to have a pen and a notebook. You try to note your, uh, you note the important words and concepts concerning about that unit. And also, I would like to inform the parents to be nearby uh, where necessary they can help you to do the work and to do uh, the home assignment. So the lesson of, it is lesson two, which is concerning about the structure of the heart. We say that every living organism contains the heart. We're going to discuss about the structure of the heart. But let us first remind ourselves about uh, open saturatory system and closed saturatory system. We said open saturatory system, it is a type of saturatory system where the blood moves in open-ended vessels. The blood is not found in a closed system or in a closed vessel. And then we said closed system, the blood moves in a closed vessel. And if it moves in a closed vessel, it means the blood moves with high pressure. And we talked about, under that, we discussed about a single saturation and a double saturation. We said the single saturatory system, that's when the blood passes once or makes a single, passes through, passes the body once for a complete circuit. And then a double saturation is a condition when the blood passes twice for a complete circuit during saturation. We mentioned examples of a single saturatory system. We said it is normally commonly found in fish. Fish, they have a single saturatory system where the blood comes from the, from the, from the lungs to the heart and immediately from the heart, the blood is pumped to different parts of the body. And then for the case of double saturatory system, the blood comes from the body, body blood capillaries or body parts it goes into the heart. From the heart, it is carried to the, to the lungs to be oxygenated. It comes back to the heart. Then coming back to the heart, it is going to be pumped to different parts of the body. So we're going to talk about now the structure of the heart. Under the learning objective of the lesson, everybody should be able to explain all the structure of the heart. Explain the internal and external structure of a Marian heart. Classify saturation in the body. We have to clarify saturation of blood in the body. The lesson has three major objectives. We'd have to describe the structure of the heart. Objective number two is to explain the internal and external structure of the Marian heart. Objective number three is to clarify the saturation of blood in the body. Let's go through the lesson. Introduction. When you talk about the heart, what is a heart? What do you understand by heart? I know everybody, you must be having an organ of your body that is responsible for pumping blood to different parts of the body. And that organ that pumps blood to different parts of the body is referred to as, uh, it is referred to as the heart. What is a heart and what does it mean? The heart is a muscular organ about the size of the fist. If you talk about the size of the fist, this is a fist. So the size of the fist is equivalent to the size of the heart. And it lies inside the chest, cavity between the lungs. So between the two lungs, that's where we normally find our heart. And uh, internally, the heart is surrounded by a tough membrane called what you call pericardium membrane. They are the membrane that normally surrounds the structure of the heart. This is a membrane that normally surrounds the structure of the heart in our body are called pericardium membrane. And uh, which covers and protects, protects, 
protects it. So it means that the heart is a muscular organ, and it is found in the, on, our, on our chest cavity between the two rungs. And internally, the heart is surrounded, internally is normally surrounded by a tough membrane. That membrane in biology you call it the paracardial membrane, paracardial membrane, all right? Which covers and protects the heart. The heart is divided into two sides. We have the left side and also the right side. And the left side, if I talk about maybe those who are doing biology very well, if I get a letter, you know how this is three. If I get another three, a three, three, you're going to have the structure of the heart. And this structure, I said that the heart is normally divided into two chambers. We have this one is the right chamber, and this one is the left chamber, students. So it means that there is a membrane that normally separates these two chambers, the right chamber and the, the, right, the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. And that one is called the septum. The septum is a membrane, and I talked about the paracardial membrane, which is an internal membrane that normally protects and covers, it covers and protects the heart. So the membrane that normally separates the heart in two, two chambers, to have the right side and uh, the left side, is referred to as the septum. I said the septum prevent, what is the function of the septum? Take your time to think about what is the function of the septum that um, I'm mentioning. What is that function of that septum that normally separates the two chambers of the heart? The right chamber with the left chamber. What does the septum do? You take your time and think about the function of the septum. Septum prevents the blood on the right side of the heart from mixing with the, that on the left side of the heart. We have that chamber, and I know those who are, who are doing biology very well, this chamber must be having its own blood, and this chamber must be having uh, its own blood. Automatically, this right chamber, most of the blood that are found in the right chamber is the deoxygenated blood. And that blood that are found in the left side of the heart is oxygenated blood. So the septum is very important to separate, to prevent the blood on the right side from mixing with that of the left side of the heart. Each side consists of small upper chambers, which are called atrium. In plural, we call, we call it to be atria. We have, if I'm trying to, I said a 3-3, three, three, a 3-3, three, three, that is a letter 3, this is another letter 3. So we have, this is RA. In biology, when I say RA, it refers to the right atrium. Or when they, are, when they are very many, we call it to be atria. We have this one, which is the, the right ventricle. And we have this one, which is RLV, which is a left ventricle. A left, no, it is, sorry, this is a left atrium. We have ROV, which is left ventricle. So, as I mentioned it, we were each side, each side, each side, each side, or each side consists of small upper chambers, two, two upper chambers. We have one upper chamber, we have another lower chamber. And uh, I said the upper chamber is called atrium, and the larger lower chamber called the ventricle. So this one is smaller than that one. So the right atrium is small upper chamber, and uh, we have a large, up, uh, large, a, large, a large lower chamber, which is called the ventricle. This makes mammalian heart to have a four-chambered heart. So simply, I can make it be clear. We have the heart is, four, is made up of four-chambered. We have a right atrium. We have the right ventricle. We have the, the left atrium, we have the left ventricle. So this makes the mammalian heart to, to, to be a four-chambered organ. The atria is also called auricles. Another name of atria it is called auricle. And a thin world and receives the blood from the heart they pump to the ventricles. Once the blood is received from the atria, it is going to be pumped to the ventricle. Student, I mentioned that another name of atria, it is called the auricle. All right? So are called auricles, and I think they are thin world, 
and receives blood from the heart, which they pump to the ventricles. The ventricles are thick walled. Why did we say that the ventricles are thick walled? The question is that I mentioned that atria are thin walled, but uh, the, uh, the ventricles are thick walled and pump blood out of the heart. But not all of them. Let me say, uh, let me talk about right ventricle and uh, left ventricle. The right ventricle are less muscular than the left ventricle. Because the left ventricle, because this chamber of the heart carries oxygenated, oxygenated blood, this one carries the oxygenated blood. It means the left ventricle has to contract and create high pressure to force the blood to move to different parts of the body. While this chamber carries blood with less, ox with less, with less pressure because there is less oxygen. The heart is made up of special muscles, which are called cardiac muscles. And these cardiac muscles, they are the muscles that makes the heart not get fatigued. They don't get tired when they are pumping the blood. The muscles of the heart are quite different from the muscles of the intestines. The muscles of the lungs, these mus the muscles of the legs and arms. And uh, these muscles of the heart, they don't get tired because they are called cardiac muscles. They keep contracting and forcing the blood to move to different parts of the body and even to go to the lungs to be oxygenated. And that's why you call it the, the muscles of the heart, especially have special muscles, which are called cardiac muscles. They don't get tired. They keep contracting and forcing the blood to move to different parts of the body and even to move to the lungs to be oxygenated. These muscles are special in two ways. We're going to talk about how they are, they are special in two ways. We have a diagram. The diagram I'm trying to show you, as I mentioned it earlier, the heart is made up of special muscles called the cardiac muscles. The cardiac muscles are the muscles that uh, contract and relax. They, uh, they work antagonistically. They do contract and relax during pumping with the blood to different parts of the body and even to the lungs. The structure we have here, some of you can try to observe it clearly and you see the structure, the internal structure of the heart. The internal structure of the heart, you can see some of you can try to see there are something that resembles the roots of a plant and these are what you call the, uh, the spiria vena cava. We have the right pulmonary artery. We have the right pulmonary vein. We have this chamber. We have because it is divided into two chambers. On the right side, we have two chambers. We have the right atrium. When, uh, when I, I mentioned that when they are many, we, told, we make it to be atria. We have the right ventricle. We have the inferior vena cava. And uh, we have the left ventricle. We have the left atrium. We have the, uh, the veins, the left uh, pulmonary vein. We have left pulmonary vein. We have left pulmonary artery. And we have the iota. So all these blood vessels, all these veins and capillaries and uh, all those, they normally carry blood into the heart, away or towards the heart. I said the heart can, be, can contract continuously without getting fatigue. That's why I mentioned the student that the muscles of the heart are special compared to other muscles of the, of the intestines, the muscles of the arms, the muscles of the legs, because for them, they do, they do get fatigue. They contract and they get fatigued, but the muscles of the heart, they don't, uh, they are special and we call it to be cardiac muscles because they continue, they continue contracting and pumping blood to different parts of the body and even to the lungs. Therefore, beat, uh, beat for a lifetime without taking a rest. Rest. That is, uh, they, they continue beating till when you still arrive, the muscles of the heart can continue beating and without taking a rest. So cardiac muscle is also called myogenic which means that it contracts uh, started by the, by the muscles itself. So the muscles of the heart are, the, are not going to be stimulated to contract. The contraction of the muscles of the heart are normally started by itself. They are initiated by the heart itself. All right? So, and not by the nerves, as in case with the muscles and tissues in the body. The tissues and muscles that are found in the body, for them to contract, they must be initiated by the, by the nerve impulses. 
If I talk about nerve impulses, those are nerve messages, they are electrical impulses that stimulates either the biceps muscles or the triceps muscles to contract. But the muscles of the heart are the muscles, the cardiac muscles are myogenic. It means that they contra their contraction are started by the muscles itself. All right? Not compared to other, other muscles. They can example biceps muscles, triceps muscles. For them to contract, they must be either stimuli. They must be a stimuli that causes those muscles to contract. I said the four, the four flaps, like, well, like waves, control the direction of the blood flow inside the, inside the heart. We talk about what you call valves. I know some of you, you'd still remember the structure of the heart is made up of valves. We have the bicapsid valves, we have the tricapsid valves, we have the semilunar valves. All these valves are very important to make the blood flow in one direction, in a single direction, not making the blood flow back to make a backflow of blood. So the, the two of these valves are called the arterioventricular valves, and which allows the, bro, the blood flow only from arteria to the ventricle. It means these arterioventricular valves, which are normally located here, they are valves that are located here. These valves are very important, and we call it to be arteria ventricular valves, and they prevent the back flow of blood from, from the arteria, from this arteria to the ventricle. Once the blood flows, flows from arteria to the ventricle, it can't, go, it can't go back. It has to move in a single direction. So let's, we say there, um, and um, which allows the blood flow only from arteria to the ventricle. The one found in the right side of the heart are called tricapsid valves because it has three flaps, and the, in the left side of the heart is bicapsid valves. The left ones are called bicapsid valves, then the left one are called bicapsid valves, then the right one are called tricapsid valves. So these that are found here are called, uh, called tricapsid valves. These that are found here are called bicapsid valves. All of both of these valves, these valves are very important in controlling the, the, the direction of blood flow. It is also known as what you call uh, the, the, the bicapsid valves. Another name of bicapsid valves or the left valves are referred to as what you call mitral valves. Let's have the internal structure of the heart. I want to be clear and observe, student. You make observation to the diagram that I'm, I'm just highlighting and you try to see. We try to see the arrows on the left side, on the right side, sorry, on the right side. The arrows are blue in color. These arrows are red in color. Take your time to think about it. Why is it the, the arrows on the left side are red in color, but those that are on the right side are blue in color? The answer is this. This chamber of the heart carries the oxygenated blood, the blood without oxygen. And uh, that chamber of the heart, which, uh, which has got uh, arrows, and uh, arrows that are red, that one indicates the chamber of the heart carries a blood with oxygen. In the blood with oxygen are referred to as oxygenated blood. That's why I try to highlight here the arrow which is red and the arrow which is blue. The, the, the red one indicates oxygenated blood, and then uh, the blue one indicates the oxygenated blood. It is very interesting, and I want to remind you that you try to observe clearly when you are labeling the diagrams, the biological diagrams, never use arrows. Arrows in biology indicates the flow of water or a flow of blood. That's why in that diagram, I'm trying to use, the, we have arrows that are showing the flow of blood, but when you are laboring, we don't use arrows because when you use arrows, meaning that you are making an error in laboring in biology. So let's have that red chamber. We have pulmonary artery, which carries the blood away from the heart. We have the vein cover, which brings blood to the heart. We have the right, art we have the right auricle, which is, also the, which is also called the right atrium. We have the tricapsid valves, which prevents the back flow of blood to the vein cover, no, no, sorry, to the right auricle. And it means the blood must be a single direction, not a double direction. Once the blood flows from here, from the vein cover to the right atrium, to the right auricle or right atrium, the blood cannot go, it cannot go back. We have the, tricap the tricapsid valves. We have wave tendons. These are, um, uh, these are what you call Muscle, um, these are the muscles that normally support the heart. We have the right, uh, right ventricle 
On that left side, we have aorta, which carries blood away from the heart to different parts of the body. We have pulmonary vein, which brings back, which brings blood, blood from the lungs back to the heart. And uh, we have semilunar valves, which prevent the backflow of blood from aortic, from aortic artery back to the to the to the left to the left ventricle. We have the heart septum, and I talked about the septum prevents the mixing of the blood of the right side and that of the left side of the heart. And uh, that is the internal structure of the heart. And I think everybody is clear, and you can observe the diagrams, and uh, you enjoy it. I think you will enjoy it. That's very good. I said now talk about circulation of blood in the heart. As I mentioned it earlier, some of you you talk, you think about what is the function of the heart. And as some of you, you do mention that my heart can make a decision. My, my heart has told me not to do this. But in biology, the heart is not concerning about reasoning and judgment. The function of the heart is to pump the blood, it to receive the blood and pump the blood to different parts of the body. I think it is very clear. Reasoning and judgment is normally done by the brain, and that one involves what you call coordination, student. Do you understand that? I said the function of the heart is to receive the blood and pump the blood. Things concerning about reasoning, judgment, taking the decision is normally done by the brain. That one is involving what you call coordination. So the heart receives blood when, 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 when its muscles relax. When the muscles of the heart relaxes, now the heart is able to receive the blood. And it pumps blood when the muscles contract. When the muscles contract, automatically the blood is going to be pumped from the heart or it is going to be pumped from one chamber of the heart to another chamber of the heart. And these two processes take place in a repeated sequence, what you call a, or a, a cycle known as what you call heart or cardiac cycle, and which is involving two processes. Uh, cardiac cycle is involving two processes. We have the diastole and the systole. So the cardiac cycle has two alternating phases. As I mentioned, it two cycles I talked about known as the systole and the diastole. During systole, what happens during systole? And I mentioned it, when the, the muscles of the heart contract, the blood is going to be pushed away from the, from the heart. When the muscles of the heart relax, automatically the, the, heart is going, the chambers of the heart are, going, are able to receive the blood. So what happens, to this, uh, what happens during these two cycles, to, during, during these cardiac cycles, the systole and diastole? During systole, the muscles of the heart chambers, they contract, they contract. And during systole, the muscles of the, of the heart, they do what, they relax. And now, and if they relax, the heart is able to receive the blood. And I said during uh, diastole, the muscles of the heart chambers relax for, for them to receive the blood. And the right atrium receives the blood coming from the body tissues uh, through the vein cover. It means that once the muscles of the heart are relaxed, when you talk about the diastole, not systole, I said the systole refers the contraction of the muscles of the heart and forces the blood to move to the to, away from the heart. And I said the right atrium receives the blood uh, coming from the body tissues through the vein cover. That is during when the muscles of the heart are relaxed. And when, the, when do the muscles of the heart relax? Student, the muscles of the heart relax during the systole cycle. And uh, this blood has a very little oxygen uh, during when the blood is coming into the heart when the muscles are relaxed, the muscles, the blood must be having less oxygen dissolved in it because most of oxygen has been taken up during respiration because during respiration, the oxygen is going to be consumed by the cells, all right, to carry their metabolic processes. And uh, it is, however, rich in carbon dioxide. So by that time, when we, uh, the, the blood comes, uh, when the muscles of the heart relax during the, the diastole, the blood comes with less oxygen, and uh, it means it must be having high reach or high percentage of carbon dioxide in it. And it appears dew red in color, and uh, it means that it is dew red. Dew red, it means that it is not purely red, having less hemoglobin. And this blood is described as deoxygenated blood. 
the right atrium and then pumps the blood into the right ventricles via the tricapsid valves. I said these left valves that prevent the backflow blood are called tricapsid valves. When, when full, the right ventricles lets the blood into the pulmonary artery. And then the semilunar valves are very important. We have the semilunar valves that prevents the blood flow from the left ventricle to the aortic artery, which carries the blood to different parts of the body. So it means the semilunar valves at the, at the opening of this artery prevent the back flow into the right ventricle. At the same time, the tricapsid valves prevent, uh, prevent any back flow into the right atrium. So the pulmonary artery carries blood to the, to the lungs, as I mentioned it. All arteries carries oxygenated blood, except pulmonary artery, all right? Which carries deoxygenated blood in the lungs. Uh, the blood picks up oxygen after picking up oxygen and gives up carbon dioxide. It picks up oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide. It is known, it is known, it is now said to be oxygenated. Once oxygen, once blood rolls in oxygen, we were going to talk about it is oxygenated. So it means that the right chamber of the heart carries deoxygenated blood and the left chamber of the heart carries oxygenated blood, which is meaning that it has acquired more oxygen, it has rolled in more oxygen. And it, it is now no longer uh, dull in uh, dull red, it is now bright red in color. And it goes to the left atrium of the heart via pulmonary vein, to the left atrium, and lets the blood into the left ventricle. And if it reaches into the left ventricle, now the blood is going to be carried to, to the aortic artery through tricapsid valves. And the blood that is found in the left ventricle are have more oxygen. That's why these muscles are more muscular than these ones, because they carry blood with high oxygen, all right? So that is a simple understanding of it. So the left ventricles pumps blood to the all parts of the body, except the lungs. This blood leaves the, the ventricles through aorta and semilunar valves, as I mentioned it, and open into aortic and prevents the backflow. So the left ventricle walls are much thicker than the right ventricle walls in order to develop high enough pressure to pump the blood to all parts of the body, as I mentioned it earlier. This is a simple diagram which summarizes all what I've mentioned. So you will just go through the diagrams and you're able to understand. So that is a home assignment. You have to go through that home assignment and it is from number one, number two, number, number one, number two, number three. So you read those home assignments and do it, and I will, in the next lesson, I will give you the answers, and uh, I let you know that we are ending our lesson. So, wash your hands, and remember to stay home, and enjoy the rest of the day. See you next time.